Welcome to worship in Coatesville Uniting Church this morning. We're about to join together to sing a song by Paul Somerville, In My Father's House, Rainbow of Colors, A Complex of Creeds, Age All Perspectives, Meet Fresh Ways to meet fresh ways to see. Everyone welcome, fling open the doors. You'll learn of my path and I'll learn of yours. Let's sing. Now let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. 
ever-loving God, we praise you that you came to us in Christ, walking our earth and sharing our humanity. For the wonder of your continuing love, we praise you. We praise you for the inspiration you give us through Christ. The knowledge that he experienced temptation just as we do. Yet he refused to compromise, staying true to his chosen path despite the awful cost. We praise you for the revelation of your purpose in Jesus. Everything we see of you throughout his earthly ministry. We remember how he taught the multitudes, instructed his disciples, and interpreted the law. How he healed the sick, responded to the needy, and cared for the poor how he confronted injustice and overcame evil for the wonder of all of that love in Jesus. We praise you. We praise you for the supreme demonstration of your grace at Calvary. The fact that you were willing to identify yourself with us, not only in life, but in death, enduring the agony of crucifixion and the awful burden of our sinfulness. Ever-loving God, we have come to recall your goodness, to marvel at your grace, and to commit ourselves again to your service. We do so because of the wonder of your love. And for that, we praise you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, Anne is coming to talk with all of the adults, the children at heart, and Charlie, even though he's not at home. Good morning all and it is good to see you Charlie. I thought you weren't going to be able to be with us because of Grandma's special birthday celebration but it's good to see you and that puppy dog again today. How lovely. I wonder Charlie whether you had to go to big school this last week. Did you go to big school? No, not yet. I know that some kinders have started to go for a little bit of time at big school because Eli did, because he's starting big school just as you are next year and he had to go on Thursday for a little time to meet the teacher and some of the children and he told me he was a bit scared about what it might be like at big school. But when he got there, he had a great time. I wonder what makes you a bit scared? Going to new places? Mm, no. Seeing new people? No. Thunderstorms? When you want to pop under your bed and hide? No, you're a big, strong, brave boy. That's great. You're not always. <laughs> But, you know, there are sometimes things that are really bad in our world and we really should be a bit scared about them and we shouldn't have anything to do with them. We call some things evil, like people who really want to hurt others and people who steal and don't tell the truth or even when countries fight each other. That's really bad and evil. Or even sometimes during the coronavirus. It's a bit of a time to be scared. Well, I've got a book about things that might frighten us and what we can do about it. When the thunder booms, kaboom! 
and when the lightning strikes, I will not be afraid at all. I won't yell, eek, or yikes. And when it's really dark at night and I'm alone in bed, I will not be afraid at all. I will not hide my head. And when I meet new boys and girls, like when you have to go to big school and I'm feeling shy, I will not be afraid at all. I will not scream or cry. And when I have to go on stage and do a special part, I will not be afraid at all and I'll sing with all my heart. Or if our country is at war and there's trouble everywhere, I will not be afraid at all because I know God is there. I do not have to be afraid when bad things come my way. I will not be afraid at all. That's what I have to say. Because my God is in control of all. The storms, the night, the war. I trust God and love him so. And he loves me even more. God is bigger than anything. Lots bigger than my fears. And I can call on him for help. Because when I pray, he hears. God made me to be brave and strong. But even when I'm not, God helps me not to be afraid because he loves me a lot. God promises to never leave. He's always here with me. That's why I will not be afraid. I have no need to be God sent his son, Jesus, to die for me. That sure is great to know, because even when my life is through, I know where I'll go. I'll go to heaven up above, and there's no fear up there. I'll live forever with my Lord, forever in his care. And then I'll say, Jesus, take my sins, protect me every day. Thank you so much for loving me and hearing when I pray. I will not be afraid at all because you are my friend. Your perfect love removes my fear and your love has no end. And that's what it says in the part of the Jesus prayer that we're finishing today. Save me from things that are scary and really bad and really evil. And God does that. So that's good. Have a good celebration of Grandma's birthday. See you next week. Bye. And, <clears throat> and now, Peter Thomas will bring to us two readings about evil. One from the First Testament and then one from the Second Testament's letters. Thank you, Peter. The first reading today comes uh, from uh, Job, Job chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And I apologise if I break up a bit. I'm on a, a mobile hotspot here. When the day came for the heavenly beings to ab appear before the Lord again, Satan was there among them. The Lord asked him, where have you been? Satan answered, I've been walking here and there, roaming around the earth. Did you notice my servant Job? The Lord asked. There is no one on earth as faithful and good as he is. He worships me and is careful not to do anything evil. You persuaded me to let you attack him for no reason at all. But Job is still as faithful as ever. Satan replied, a person will give up everything in order to stay alive. 
But now suppose you hurt his body, he will curse you to your face. So the Lord said to Satan, all right, he is in your power, but you are not to kill him. Then Satan left the Lord's presence and made sores break out all over Job's body. Job went and sat by the rubbish heap and took a piece of broken pottery to scrape his sores. His wife said to him, you are still as faithful as ever, aren't you? Why don't you curse God and die? Job answered, you are talking nonsense. When God sends us something good, we welcome it. How can we complain when he sends us trouble? In spite of everything he suffered, Job said nothing against God. The second reading comes from the letter to the Ephesians and uh, behind me, you can see the, uh, the amphitheater in Ephesus. This is Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 to 18. What else is there to say? Just this. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on God's complete armour. Then you'll be able to stand firm against the devil's trickery. The warfare we're engaged in, you see, isn't against flesh and blood. It's against the leaders, against the authorities, against the powers that rule the world in this dark age against the wicked spiritual elements in the heavenly places. For this reason, you must take up God's complete armor. Then when wickedness grabs its moment, you'll be able to withstand, to do what needs to be done and still to be on your feet when it's all over. So stand firm, put the belt of truth around your waist Put on justice as your breastplate. For shoes on your feet, ready for battle, take the good news of peace. With it all, take the shield of faith. If you've got that, you'll be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. Pray on every occasion in the spirit with every type of prayer and intercession. You'll need to keep awake and alert for this with all perseverance and intercession for all God's holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Now I'm inviting you to join in a song which I'm not sure how well you might know, but one which has been a favorite of mine for some time. Safe in the shadow of the Lord, beneath his hand and power. I trust in him. I trust in him, my fortress and my tower. Trust in him. 
It was way back in 1942 that C.S. Lewis wrote the Screwtape Letters, dedicated to Tolkien, the author of the Lord of the Rings cycle. They were very good friends at Oxford University. In this imaginative correspondence from senior devil Screwtape to his nephew and apprentice Wormwood, Screwtape attempts to help Wormwood draw his patient away from the enemy. Many are the subtle ways he suggests to accomplish the devilish ends he has in view. One of them is mentioned early. My dear Wormwood, I wonder you should ask me whether it is essential to keep the patient in ignorance of your own existence. That question, at least for the present phase of the struggle, has been answered for us by the high command. Our policy for the moment is to conceal ourselves. In the preface to the book, C.S. Lewis wrote, there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They themselves are equally pleased by both errors. What are we to make of Satan, Beelzebul, the devil, the evil one? Was C.S. Lewis really right in suggesting it's an error to disbelieve in the existence of devils? Have we in the West gone so far in shaping our view of the material world in terms of the material that we can no longer believe in the spiritual? Have we gone so far in our belief in materialism that we have to strain our credulity to believe in either God or the devil? But in fact, more Christians today believe in evil spirits, demons and the devil than those Christians who don't. Are they right or are we? What's all this got to do with that last petition in the Lord's Prayer? Save us from evil. Actually, no one is quite sure how to translate that phrase. It can be translated, save us from evil, or save us from the evil one. If you look in the various versions of the New Testament that we have available today, you'll find, for instance, that the New Revised Standard Version, published in 1990, translates Matthew 6.13 as, Rescue us from the evil one. A footnote reads, or from evil. The contemporary English version of 1991 reads, protect us from evil, but has a footnote, or the evil one, that is the devil. The most modern translation I know, the Passion Translation, follows suit. On the other hand, the Common English Bible of 1996 only offers one translation, Save us from the evil one. I guess you takes your money and makes your choice. When I examine all the evidence, I come down in favour of Matthew meaning us to understand Jesus teaching us, save us from the evil one. And I gulp when I have to admit that. Science is my background. Science deals with observable facts, with the material world. It has nothing to do with the spiritual. Numbers of notable scientists are beginning to admit that it's harder to be a scientist and an atheist than it was. But many only talk of God as a principle or a law of creation. 
This is not the God I know. The God I know through the person of Jesus Christ. The God I know, I know through the personal presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. God is in no way an impersonal life force or principle. God is personal. So, if the positive, life-affirming, creative, loving life force is personal, why should I cling to the notion that the negative, destructive, life-denying, hateful power of evil cannot be personal? If I believe in a God who hides himself within human history, yet reveals himself within the man Jesus, why can't I believe in a devil who hides himself within human events, yet is revealed in the demonic evil that disfigures and debases humanity? However optimistic we may be, however much we wish to emphasize humankind's natural goodness rather than original sin or natural depravity, however much we try to ignore the devilish, wicked, demonic, we cannot pretend that evil does not exist. It does. We know it. It touches our lives. We don't have to believe in a being with horns and tail, complete with pitchfork for spearing recalcitrant sinners and dispatching them into hell's furnace, any more than we have to believe in a grandfatherly bearded figure ensconced on a fleecy cloud in the empyrean blue of heaven but we cannot ignore the far-reaching and all-encompassing power of evil. It exists and all too often takes us into its grasp and shakes us or works through us to spoil the lives of others, especially those we love. Sometimes evil does seem impersonal. Earthquakes, tsunami, cyclone, avalanche, epidemic, death itself. These things bear us off into tragedy, pain and grief. Even more often evil works through people. It's easy to talk about the demonic evil of a Hitler, a Stalin, a Mao Zedong, an Idi Amin, or a whole raft of others equally ruthless and despicable. But there are some whose names we forget too easily. General schoolboys in England, political assassins, and terrorists anywhere and everywhere. But is it any less evil for people like you and me to allow starvation to take the lives of individuals, men, women, and children in nations around the globe, while we spend money on slimming courses and Weight Watcher foods and feed our pets more than it takes to keep several people alive in drought-ridden Africa? Is it any less evil to do so little to bring disease-free water, health, education, meaningful lives to all those around the world who live hand to mouth? Is it any less evil to do nothing to bring fairness to politics for the indigenous people of the United States, Canada, Brazil, or the Koori peoples of Australia? Is there any less evil in the way we deal with those amongst whom we work and play, but especially our own families, wives, husbands, children, parents? 
evil is deeply personal. And now a quote. It has been well suggested that the devil never did a better day's work for himself than when he persuaded people like you and me not to believe in his existence. We deny the reality of evil. What once we call sin is now maladjustment, wrongdoing, a problem in our education or, or in our environment. We persuade ourselves that the devil's not involved. It's part of our human predicament. Some day we'll solve it. The evil continues. The devil laughs at our naivety and continues on his merry way. But note this. God wants us to discover his reality. God reveals himself in his love and care for his creation and for us, his children. It's different with the devil. Where God reveals, evil conceals. Evil wants nothing better than that we should not believe in its existence. Evil does its grimace work on the basis of our agnosticism. Let's not pretend. We must take evil seriously. We must admit evil infects even our best intentions and endeavours. We must acknowledge the power and deceitfulness of the devil. We must abandon our illusions and we must pray with total and absolute sincerity. Abba, Father, Lord, save us from the power of the evil one. Without your strength, we fall victim to him again and again and again. Though the conflict with evil is not over, though we may suffer at evil's hand, we dare anticipate what shall be. In the end, God shall be triumphant. This we know. This we assert. So even now, we exult in the coming of God's kingdom. We testify to God's power. We declare God's glory now and forever. Amen. often describes this as prayers for the people, but the order of service calls it prayers of the people. And to borrow a phrase, it is prayers of the people, by the people, and for the people. Uh, this prayer is going to have two parts, so be warned that the first Amen is but a segue to the second part. 
The first part, which comes from resources written by Bruce Pruer, includes a response. When I say, may your saving love abound, I invite you to respond with, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your saving love abound, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In our prayers today, we will especially remember those people whose lives have been warped and stunted by evil. Let us pray. Wherever people grow up, without the example and encouragement of loving folk who have respect for themselves and others, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever people live with a bitterness of spirit, which poisons and distresses all those who live around them, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever some live greedily, without gratitude or generosity, always keeping a ruthless eye on the happiness and possessions of others, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever people resort to violence, rape, brutality, terrorism and warfare, spreading immense misery and accelerating hatreds, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever people suffer disease, handicap, injustice, exploitation, slavery or forced prostitution and have no faith or hope to succour them, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever communities are torn by rumours, old resentments and new patterns of discrimination, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever folk sit with the dying, make funeral arrangements or spend sleepless nights grieving and fearing, may your saving love abound. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Holy friend, you cherish every single soul on this planet. Teach us, slow learners that we are, how to better live together, organize communities, end injustice, and eradicate those evils that defile the sacred divine image that resides in us all. Through Jesus Christ, our friend and saviour. Amen. And now the second part. Eternal God, we know that as we bow and pray, there are some days when our faces are filled with worry. Sometimes our lives are full of stress and trouble, and always they are filled with wondering what tomorrow might bring. We thank you that we are in the good company of the disciples who were also filled with concerns and wondered about tomorrow. They wished for signs that tomorrow would be all right. They wanted to know what would happen and when. We have not outgrown that need. Tomorrow brings anxiety for all of us. We ask in times when we are fearful that you would help us to be more trusting. We ask in times of crisis that you would help us to be courageous and resilient and know that you will see us through. We ask in times of setbacks that you would give us a renewed vision of what is possible if we put our creativity to full use. We ask in times of discouragement or de depression that you will give us the hope necessary to go forward. We ask in times of inner disequilibrium that you will give us pow enough power to be victorious over any uncertainty or inner quivering. O oh God, in whose time are all times and all endings, be our assurance and bring us your peace. In the bleakness known to every generation, may we be undaunted in expressing the power and hope of the gospel for our time. In the bleakness known to every generation, may we not long for a certainty which will always elude us. In the bleakness known to every generation, may we not expend our energy in anxiousness. Give to us the ability to trust you into the ages of all ages. Amen. 
inviting you to join together in a song written by Mary Peters. I confess that in some ways this song used to be one that I thought of as blindly optimistic. All must be well. And yet, if we believe in God's power, all will be well. Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. Let's sing. Just on 52 years ago, Anne and I had our honeymoon in New Zealand. One of my favourite photographs from that time is a picture of Lake Matheson. A small body of water, completely calm, unruffled, reflecting the mountains beyond. In some ways, a picture of peace. And yet peace is really much, much more than that. It's peace. It's having everything held together. And in the original Hebrew word shalom, it could also be a sense of victory because peace was now what remained. And the peace of God that passes beyond any human understanding. Keep our hearts and minds safe and secure in the knowledge and love of God and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all today and remain with us forever. Amen.
joy.